seven o'clock. If you guys could please turn on your microphones. Call this meeting to order. And welcome everybody to come. Thank you for coming. That will move us on to agenda item number two, which is consent approval of the planning commission minutes from August 14th, 2024. Any concerns about them? You don't get a chance to read them. I did read them. All right. You did. I'm so, sure you did. I just find to make sure it was accurate. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's nothing that needs changing in them, I'll entertain a motion to approve them. Okay. Uh, I'll second that. Well, oh, we got to make it first. Yeah, oh, you can make it first. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the minutes from our last meeting. Just August, August 14th, 2024. There you go. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 That was all of us. The minutes pass. Moves us on to agenda item number three, which is discussion, action, recommended to grant proposed conditional use permit number 144 for holistic healing and wellness services and coaching as a home occupation located at 608 West 2425 North with Valley Day. So, Jenny, do you want to introduce this? And then we'll have the applicant come up and take sure. questions. Oh, yeah. 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 Sure. Yes. oh, you don't have to. But that would be so this is a, an application for a home occupation. And the there is a outline of the property. There was an outline of the property. So I had to pack it. Last page. There we mm -hmm. go. Uh, of where the property is located and the entrance to the home occupation and I pulled up for your review the basis for issuance of a conditional use permit and also the home occupation standards if you'd like to go through any of those with the applicant she is present please come up and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about what you're doing. Sure. Um, I'm Valine Day. I do holistic healing and wellness at my home. So um, I have clients that come and I do anything from foot zoning, face zoning, Reiki, or coaching. Um, just really depends on the client. I also do cranial sacral um, and sometimes like yoga, individual yoga breath work sessions. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so. So I usually I only have one work. client at a time, okay. um, and it just depends on the day, but I never have more than five in a day, um, but like I said, one at a time. Okay. They coming and going at the same time? Yeah. Okay. Like the most is like if somebody has to wait five minutes for the person to finish up or whatever, but yeah. Are they parking in the driveway or are they parking on the street? They do both. It just like, depends. Yeah, they can, there's room for them on the driveway. Um, okay. We have a big driveway, but most people just park under the trees for the shade. But in the winter, I have people drive or pull into the driveway. So yeah. one at a time, so it's two cars maximum. So that shouldn't be a big issue there. So what are your hours? What do you open your hours? Um, it just varies, but I typically open like Monday through Friday, um, nine to five ish. But usually night three, but it's yeah. not super late at night. Yeah, yeah no. Okay. Not super early either, which is great. Yeah, I do it while my kids are at school. So. Same. The hours in the code are seven to ten, right? Yes. Yeah. Do you? Um, so, with the um, particular strategy, I'm blanking on it. Method. Maybe. Do you have to have any licensures to do any of that sort of thing? And do you have them? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so for foot zoning, it is through the Utah Foot Zoning Association, and that's done. And then all my other ones are certified through different avenues. But it's not like massage therapy or anything like that. So, like cranial sacral, I just got from an individual person who was certified to teach me to do it. So. Um, the other question I had is, you mentioned that you're not, I forget the word you use, not a vendor, um, a reseller. Yeah. Um, 
So you're not selling to the public. You're, you would only be selling, you would only be passing along the product to your client if they're interested in buying yeah. that particular product. Yeah. So would you order order it for them yes. and then just give that to them? Yeah. Do you so have do. actually in your house and they can just say, I want some of this or I want some of that? I have like very limited things. So I do like essential oils, so that's under an MLM. Um, and then I have like um, clean, simple eats and just ingredients, which is like protein, greens, stuff like that, but I keep very small quantities or I order it specific to them. So it's not like I'm getting, I get way less of that than I do from Amazon for myself. So I don't have like a ton of packages or like storage or anything like that. Yeah. And then I have my like user tax reseller certificate, whatever that thing is called through the state. So yeah, the very official name that I don't very good. We're glad you're in better health. You were sick last I was. month, correct? Yeah. Right. So we're glad you're good. So is the is the bulk of your business um, from the the sessions you do with your clients as opposed to the product sales? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. That is just very like if they have something going on and I recommend something or they need something specific for their health, then I order it. Issues. Um, G on the bullet points on the code, no wholesale or retail sales of products, uh, product display or warehousing of products directly from the home, except those that are uh, created on the property from a common trade or craft. So we're trying to see how prevalent that is and whether or not that's going to impede things. Yeah, I mean, I don't even mark it up or anything like that. They get the wholesale price that I pay, so I don't, it's, I don't even consider it part of my business because I don't make money on it. Right, it's just something else you do a little later. Okay. Yeah, those are my only concerns. Yeah, that's why I asked. So, what percentage of your house are you using for the business too? You can see. Um, I'm not good with It's gotta be less than a quarter. Yeah, of the it's house. small. It was the front room and we just framed it in. It's just um, an office. So yeah, it's just, just an office room, space. Yeah, it's just one room. Like 10 by 12 ish. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not an exact square, it's no. but yeah. Not the whole house is the business, or the whole no. first floor or something no. like that. Or just make sure that. Yep. So if that wasn't clear in here. Other than that, I don't have issues with the yeah. parking. I don't have I doubt we have issues with the hours, especially with one at a time. Right, exactly. So yeah. it's not going to cause any headaches for the neighbors. Yeah. None of this stuff is going to create any noise or odors or other obnoxious side effects. So. My neighbors only complain about dogs pooping in their yard. So. Very publicly, as oh, we're yes. aware. Since yes, that's also my neighborhood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no other concerns. Or do you guys have any other concerns, questions? Anything else that would hold this up? Thank no. you for coming up yes. and helping us to understand better. We appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. We love entrepreneurs. Thanks. All right. We ready for a motion? Yeah, we're ready for a motion. Okay. I motion that we um, approve the proposed conditional use permit number 144 for all the healing and wellness services and coaching as a home occupation located at 608 West, 2425 North. Um, yes. Subject to the code. Subject the Harrisville City Municipal Code. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes. I just wasn't sure if that was all of us this time. Thanks, Queen. Thank you. Okay. All right. And as a reminder, since it's on here, there's 15 days for anyone who objects to the conditional use to appeal it. And after those 15 days, so on September 26th, you can come in and sign everything and you'll have their conditional use permit. Okay. So you. I doubt anyone will. They don't often, but they have that in them. Okay. So that moves us on to agenda item number four, which is public comments. So if any of you want to come and Give us three minutes of your opinion. Or two minutes, or one minute. I don't know. If no one wants to participate in public comment, I'll move 
on to agenda item number five, which is commission and staff follow-up. Jenny, you got follow-up for us? I do. I have a little follow-up for the as the commissioners, your four hours of training, annual training. There is an opportunity. Uh, our appeal authority, Craig Call, actually wrote a book called Ground Rules for Land Use, and last year they sent us the actual books. This year they have condensed it to a handbook. And this is a QR code where you can order it. I can either order enough for everyone if you'd like me to, or you can individually scan and have it sent to you. It's pretty, uh, yeah. Yes, it's paid for out of the 1% surcharge on all of our building permits. That's what pays for the training through the Utah Land Use Institute. And this is also the website you can go to. They have training videos that you can take for your land use training. So you can go to the Utah Land Use Institute so you can take a picture of this or I can email it out to you. And you can snap whatever's easiest for you. I'm happy to support. So if it's easier for me to order the handbook for you. Easier for me. I don't if have I just a order QR code reader. Therefore, that doesn't okay. work for me. I can do that for you. Oh, so you. I'll just order enough for the commission and then have them as soon as they commit. If everybody's okay with that. On that website with those trainings, like mm -hmm. for to do them just Logger time. Yes, please. Yeah, okay. yeah it, all of the trainings will have uh, some type. Well, they don't all have a certificate at the end, but some of them do. And then just email me which ones you watched, what the day, time, and that's good enough documentation for us. I know that you've completed them. And they're across the board. They have development agreements. They have appeals. They have other subdivisions at all kinds of land use code on there. The book version is very nice to have. Yes. have a lot of the examples of what so happens when you can so yeah. yeah. well, mm -hmm. so so like <coughs> Are there multiple editions? I don't believe so. Okay. I think it's just one and if if there are copies of the original book that can be distributed or, or checked out, <laughs> that would be helpful because okay. um, it is very informative. Okay. The only other follow-up I have is the mayor and I attended the Utah League of Cities and Towns conference last week. Um, there were a lot of housing discussions, as you can imagine, it's still a hot topic for the legislators, and some additional conversation around that. I'll just keep you up to date as we, we started the legislative policy committees that meets once a month outside of the session and during the session we meet once a week. Those are starting up again as we talk about what the legislators might decide for the 2025 session. So I'll try my best to keep you apprised of all of those things. I just heard the governor tonight talk about he has a certain number of welcome housing that he wants States. So be interesting. Some interesting projects going in with that too. The one in Pleasant View that made the news that was getting greatly expanded. Uh, so. Pleasant View. I'm aware of the Pleasant View one. Just west, just next to the freeway. It was in the papers that it was Pleasant View. I can double check the actual address. There was one in Weber County that actually the governor referenced during. He was a keynote speaker on one of the days, and he right. referenced Weber County just approved a large project in between Far West and Plain City. I believe it's north of 2700-ish. And they are utilizing the de-restricted housing that the legislators in the project. And it will have a variety of homes. They won't all be the same size, but it will have a certain number of affordable houses included in that. That's something that we have implemented in our proposed discussions with developers is whether they have a affordable housing element, right. trying to boost the ownership in, in the state. So that's all I have. Any you guys? I did have a one question. I did have one question on the, <coughs> uh, the development that's going in there right on where 89 meets 750. The couple of thank you, that I just. Um, when we looked at the initial design, they were going to have like a, a grassy area. Did we substitute that for the retention?
retention pond that they could use as their grassy area? The retention no. pond is, is grass. Right, right. Because um, the open space it hasn't been developed yet. Okay, because it's supposed to be behind it. Well, I, as I was looking back there, it looks like the houses go all the way back. And I, I mean, I, I haven't walked back there, but I just thought, I don't know how they're going to put any green space back there. I can have the building inspector take a look at the plan, okay. make sure with the plot plan that it aligns with that it's following the, okay, good. The, the master development I, agreement. I just look at how tight everything is in it's there. Very tight. Oh my gosh. And uh, I just feel bad for those kids that are going really have a place to play. I mean, it's just, you know, that just isn't really, really good. There is so, the open space that was part of the plan is on the east. Right. The east, side north, east the northeast yes. corner of that, right? Which hasn't As I remember. been developed quite yeah, yet. They're close. Are they? yeah, I, they think, I believe they've there. poured foundations for the remaining two buildings, but there okay. was a proposed amendment, but I imagine that the developer decided not to request that because I haven't heard anything for a while. I just, I just is wanted to make sure that it was still on track to put some green space there. In order to get it, in uh, final acceptance through the city, it has to be a development agreement. As much green space as possible. Yeah. Especially in certain places. Yes. It's hard to put it in when yeah. the housing gets denser. Yes, exactly. We have received feedback about the traffic issue on 2000 North, which they did put the signage up, and we anticipate they'll have a no left turn sign to go into the development from 2000. We're hoping a lot of those traffic and congestion issues will be alleviated when they put the north 2550 connection that's not available for people to use yet right. so we're hopeful that that will help some of that traffic um, yeah it'll normalize as what people get used to it too okay. okay thank you for that update i appreciate it just let me ask you